Okay, here's the project of the day. I have this existing slab. Underneath this slab, I have a uh, sewer drain pipe coming from my toilet going out to the street. Right here at the green dot, um, via a camera, we located there's some uh, rooted intrusion into the drain pipe. So I'm going to cut this area out and repair my, it's probably a, it's a three or four inch um, old galvanized or, or steel uh, drain pipe. In order to cut through the concrete, I'm going to use this electric evolution um, concrete saw. Uh, it has a port on it to hook up a vacuum, so I got a shop back over here. And so we use the shop back to uh, basically try to keep the dust under control. We are indoors, and again, I probably have to cut down three to four inches through the concrete on this. Um, additional equipment, of course, is safety equipment, uh, ear protection, respirator, eye protection. I hook up with uh, two circuits. I got an extension cord. I'll go out to another circuit for uh, the, the vacuum and then use this circuit right here. Um, for this uh, tile saw because these are these do probably draw 15 amps or so so let's have to set two circuits okay let's get cutting and cut through the uh, the concrete here Okay, first round did not go that good from the dust standpoint. This is what they supply with the, with the saw. It's sort of this offset angled soft plastic pipe. And then again, I put this PVC pipe in here to kind of redirect it. The problem is this, this shroud that goes over the blade couldn't move very good. So now I modified it and I'm using a flexible hose attached and now my shroud can easily move because what I noticed is that this shroud isn't down on the ground if it's up here when you're cutting if it's not, if it's not here if it's up here you just get dust everywhere um, I don't want to use any water or anything because it just splashes this muck on the wall so let's go retry it with our new setup new setup of a, of a flexible hose on the, the, the uh, intake right down here or the vacuum port on this blade shroud. Okay. Okay, the sign is complete. So now I've moved on to jackhammering out this rectangle that I sawed out. My summary on the saw is the saw worked great for cutting 
through uh, the 60 year old concrete. No problem. I, there's wire mesh in here, I'm almost certain. Uh, no rebar. From the, again, saw, I give it a five star. Dust control, I give it a one star. And again, I don't know if it was a setup problem on my side, but the problem is that dust just makes it underneath the uh, shroud and it makes this place a dusty mess. Um, okay, but I'm gonna continue on, jackhammer this out and let's get to the pipe. Okay, jackhammered out the concrete. And as you can see, there is wire mesh. And as usual, wire mesh, what I don't like about wire mesh is most of the wire mesh here is pushed to the bottom of the cement. You know, they don't use doobies or something to hold it up in the middle, but that's okay, that's the way it is. But I gotta say, the saw did a fantastic job of cutting through this concrete. I give it a, a minimum two inches, maybe there, or two and a half to three and a half. We went through everything. The great thing is we cut through all this wire, makes it so much easier to extract everything. So the saw worked, uh, other than the dust, the saw worked flawlessly. So, oops, a little earthquake there. Okay, let's get this all dug out. Let's find the pipe. Okay, here's where we're at. I basically got the pipe removed. And as usual, there's a, a lot more damage than you initially think. You can see that this pipe just has a big crack down the middle here. And so I ended up having to remove about 24 inches worth of uh, old cast iron pipe. There's my new pipe. I got uh, two uh, Fernco connections on there. Just standard fern coat connection with the uh, additional metal sleeve going around it, which I think it makes everything a little bit more rigid. Okay, in order to cut the pipe, by the way, I used um, a uh, seven inch grinder. About I, I just went and bought one about a hundred bucks with the blades at Lowe's. And then I got a small reciprocating saw to finish it off. You can't, you can't get to the whole pipe with a grinder because you're down, you know, you can't go all the way around the pipe because the pipe's down low. So I used the grinder initially to cut through most of it, reciprocating saw with a carbide blade to get the final uh, inch or so, and that seemed to work out pretty good. So let's come and take a look at this. So again, we come down into here, and uh, yeah, you can see one end of the pipe over there. Oop, let's get this centered. One end of the pipe there, the other side of the pipe, it's a little harder to see, is right there. So, nothing, nothing fancy. And again, Fernco, Fernco, and we're ready to put the uh, ABS pipe in. Okay, just a couple details on the, uh, the new ABS pipe. Again, the, uh, this is a three inch ABS pipe. I have two Fernco connectors here, three inch. Um, these uh, Fernco connectors are the type with the uh, center metal, additional metal sleeve to give everything more rigidity. Um, I use those type, a little more expensive, but those I think are the right ones to use. And then uh, I ch did chamfer down my three inch uh, pipe, just to make sure nothing gets hung up on this edge. And then lastly, I put a, a piece of tape here so that I know, this is my a reference point, so I know how far I, I have to slide these Fernco connectors, Fernco connectors onto the existing cast iron pipe to make sure that this thing gets centered. You want the center where the two pipes meet to be right here. Once you start sliding this onto the, AB, or the existing cast iron pipe, you can't really see what's going on, but if you uh, do a measurement beforehand, you know how, what this distance from here to here needs to be in order to get this connector centered. Okay, so again, is this a, put a piece of tape. I know this distance from here to here in order to get this thing centered onto the uh, existing, existing pipe. Okay, I'm using this ratcheting wrench to tighten these Fernco connections. 
And I recommend the wrench because it, it's amazing how much 60, I think it's 60 inch pounds is. And there it snaps and that one's tight. Let's do one more of these. That one's tight. Anyway, you know, get the picture. I got this on Amazon, I think about 15 bucks. Okay, that one's tight. Okay, one more to do here. Okay, here we go. Done. Okay, again, here's the tool available on Amazon and I highly recommend it because you know it's amazing how uh, tight these these are okay okay now more uh, mindless part I got the pipe in there I'm gonna take my tamper about every you know, eight inches or so we're gonna tamp it down again this is a uh, oh I don't know if it's Harbor Freight or not whatever it's just a tamper 10 inch by 10 inch probably uh, Feels like about 15 pounds, nothing major. Okay, let's uh, eight inches at a time and get up to the uh, level of the existing concrete. I had a comment in one of my videos that doesn't show me doing the work. I don't know, I guess they think I have uh, somebody in the, in, the, in the wings waiting to come in and do all the hard running work, but uh, nope, I do all the shoveling, digging, you name it, I do it. Okay, I got the hole all filled up. I used the existing dirt. I ended up a little short. I must have compacted it pretty good. So I added uh, about two or two inches or so of um, uh, just general purpose sand to bring the level, the top level to the sand to be about four inches. Uh, compacted that down again with my compactor. Okay, we're going to tie uh, our cement into the existing um, slab. Because again, you don't want the slab to go up or to go down. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to put some holes into the existing slab. with, uh, And then we're going to put rebar in there. I'm using a Makita um, um, hammer drill that I own. Uh, 3 8 inch bit. I'm using number 3 rebar. By the way, number 3 rebar is 3 8 Number 4 rebar is 4 8 or 1 half. That's the rebar system if you're ever curious about that. So again, we'll, uh, we'll do a 3 8 put in some rebar so that our new cement basically has a way of tying in to the old cement and we won't get any sinkage or raising of uh, our new slab piece. Okay, we're on basically the final step. I got the rebar in there. And so I tied it in about five places. And I drilled the holes into the existing concrete about the depth of the drill bit, which is about six inches. And again, we're tied in about five places and number three rebar. And now we just have a trough here. I'm, gonna, I'm mixing up my concrete and we're gonna fill the hole with concrete. Okay, let's go. Fill the hole. Okay, we are basically done. I patched up the hole with some new concrete, and now it's as good as new. Okay, again, these are all the items I needed to complete the job. And uh, one of the things I didn't stress enough are actually these items in the center here, safety equipment. I definitely get a, I get a real good respirator, um, ear protection, eye protection, gloves. I use them all the time. We started out by initially using this, this concrete saw to cut through the existing concrete. Okay, then we dug it out. Once we dug it out, found the existing cast iron pan, uh, pipe. I used a 7-inch an angle grinder to cut through most of the pipe. And then a reciprocating saw to cut through the last couple of uh, inches or quarter inches uh, with, that has a carbide tip on it. Actually, once we got all that up, then we basically replaced it with uh, three inch ABS and Fernco connectors. Using my uh, Fernco, Fernco uh, 
torque wrench there that works really good highly recommend one of those and when we just filled it back in mix some uh, concrete over here and smoothed it oh we put in the rebar sorry forgot the rebar so I, had, I used a four inch four and a half inch angle grinder to cut some rebar and and the Makita saw to hammer excuse me the Makita hammer drill to drill into um, the existing concrete for the rebar number three rebar okay so that's basically it as far as cost goes I'd say all the things buying a $250 um, cement cutting saw a hundred dollar angle grinder that takes me up to 350 I had all the other tools but with other miscellaneous and so forth let's say 150 so this cost me about 500 bucks my quote to do this was uh, about 2300 bucks so I saved about 1800 bucks and I got to keep a couple tools here too so to me overall good deal okay that completes this video thank you for watching